So, you're an up-and-coming red hive who's looking to make a lot of honey. Unfortunately for us red hives, we aren't meant for honey making, but don't let that discourage you. Now in this business presentation, I'll mainly teach you the mechanics to boosting. However, be sure to refer to all the guides that you have at your disposal to build your dream hive. The general setup that you should be running are your 12 precise bees, 10 spicy bees, and your 8 vectors, but this can vary from person to person. You should 100% be running a Scorching Star and Star Saw as your main Supreme Star amulet passives. Here are the general stats that you should be looking out for. And here are the other amulets to keep an eye on. Pause if you need to examine, because we'll be moving on. If you are unlucky to be running a solo Scorch, and you have managed to switch to an early Red Hive, do not worry. Well, maybe a little, but I'll explain some extra tips to you poor folk at the end, so skip to this timestamp. Prior to your boost, first you should make sure that you make your necessary preparations. A checklist should always be filled out prior to your crusade. Here's the one that I like to use, provided by Saccharins. You're going to need a boost macro, and I recommend a simple one, like Jitbit. What this will do is that it will automatically activate your stingers at the correct interval for efficient star saw usage. The one I use does both stingers and gumdrops, and I'll provide a file for it in my discord if you'd like. Now once you have gone through your checklist, you're ready to go. Before you donate, you should activate the sticker stack and build up your precision. To build precision, walk over all three targets that are shot by your precise bee. Then you will see a purple target icon at the top of your screen. Do this until it is times 10 and you will have it for 60 seconds. But you can run over all three targets yet again to maintain that times 10. If you don't do it in time, the stack is lost and you must rebuild it. After this is done, then it is time for the donation. I like to donate a single purple potion and most of the time it is decently reliable. Once this is done, you can choose the field you'd like to boost in. I prefer pepper, but rose and strawberry may also work. Also one key thing to know, I highly recommend only picking up the wins for the field you plan to boost in. Trust me, you're going to need the top of your screen to see everything that's going on. Once you have received your wins, immediately get to that field and refresh your precision before starting your boost macro. Double check to see if you have glittered and super smoothie, then wait a few seconds before you drop your loaded dice to X4 the field. You should make sure that your glitter is in your hotbar to avoid any issues of refreshing mid boost. Have someone remind you or constantly be checking that toward the end of the first half. Now here comes the hard part. Your goal will be to keep the times 10 precision the entire boost and setting up lineups for every scorching star. Off scorch, what you should be doing is allowing the furthest purple target to hit you, which allows a precise mark to be set up. This is why your precise bee needs to be gifted. These precise marks grant 7% crit chance and 7% super crit chance and stack up to 3 times. Keep in mind that a lot of red's honey has to do with crits. Think about in how other games, critical hits do massive amounts of damage to an enemy. Beastworm has the exact same process and your goal is to maximize the amount of critical chance and power. If you ever watch other red boosting videos, this is precisely what they are doing when their scorching star is not activated. They will constantly set up precise marks, and then when the precise shots hit them, it collects all other tokens around them like a token link, including red boost. So technically, by doing this, they also speed up the process of allowing their scorching star to activate. And remember, Scorching Star is one you should be making a majority of your honey, anywhere from 70 to 90% of your honey. Generally, you can control when the star activates, but you can't exactly control its lineup. Your movements should have a purpose. Don't run around in circles like these misses coming. It's not. Turn on your shift lock and make swift, straight, and sometimes swinging movements. Get this technique down, it's very important. I recommend that you practice this prior to your boost in a field with an oil activated. As you are setting up your precise marks, remember that when precision runs low, that becomes a priority. So refresh it immediately when you see it dip. When your Scorching Star counter is roughly at 20, start preparing your X-Flame. You want these two to line up as perfectly as possible. When the Scorching Star activates, this is when the real boosting begins. Remember that maintaining your times 10 precision takes priority over anything else. If it is low, refresh it by walking over all three targets. So now that we've covered the basics, I'll cover some more intricate details. When you sit in your flames for a while, you build up a buff called Flame Heat. Flame Heat gives your spicy bees more speed and allows your precise bees to collect a lot more. You lose this buff if you are shot from your precise bee. So when you're boosting, after activating all three targets, you have to immediately retreat back into the center where you won't be hit by the precise shot. So now you may be asking, but Lemon Tree, you said before to let the shots hit me. Now you're saying to dodge them or we won't make honey? That is true. You do allow the shots to hit you but only off Scorch when you're building to your Scorch activation. Keep in mind that I also mentioned you make all of your honey during Scorch activation, so many things that you do off Scorching Star will be completely irrelevant. Now for the more advanced techniques, which is usually done but not quite easily put into words. When you're in the center, your saw can't always collect everything, you still need to be centered in the field. What you can do is if you're not going for all three targets to make honey, you can actually allow a target to hit you to act as a token leak. It will collect all buffs around you, 
but you would lose flame heat by doing this. What you do is you have to wait for more flames to come in and rebuild that flame heat. For example, if your Exclam hasn't activated yet, you can usually let these targets hit you to speed up that process. You then gain a sudden stack of buffs from this and your Exclam is able to rebuild your flame heat. This is when you go for all three targets to make honey. It's also important to keep in mind that when you let the targets hit you, you're not just losing your flame heat, but you're also converting your bag. So let's say you were a solo Scorch user. You'd want to abuse this function off Scorch and only spam down your micro converters during your Scorching Star. But there's a reason why it isn't recommended to run a solo Scorch, and that's because your bag just won't convert fast enough and it can't keep up. Now I'll cover maintaining your red boost tokens. When you run over tons and tons of targets, you disallow your precise speeds from spawning red boost tokens. Instead, it just spawns focus tokens. What you should be doing is you should ignore certain precise shots and allow them to just shoot without you activating the target. This allows a red boost token to spawn. Red boost is a buff that's very easy to lose during your boost, so always be scanning at the top to check. Finally, I'll cover some other important buffs like baby love and bear morph. Getting everything is hard to come by. But when you have lineups like those, always go for all three targets after you have built up your Scorching Star. Sometimes when you spot no good buffs, you should actually slow down your movements, only moving to refresh precision or even setting up some more precise marks. I personally wait until Bear Morph or Baby Love before making my movements. Okay, so guys, I think that's pretty much it and I covered most of it, so there's definitely a lot. So I'll provide the guide by Saccharins in the description below if you want to read about it. And if you have any more questions, you can ask me in the Discord server. I'll provide a link below. And yeah, good luck.